right, we're getting ready to fly the Eagle. Uh, made a few changes, which we'll talk about during the flight, but I want to go ahead and get on with it. It's kind of hot. As you can see, I have a temperature showing down there. It's showing 127 degrees. That is on the flight controller barometer is where that's coming from. So I'm going to go ahead and get the airplane armed and in the air. Engines armed. Before anything kind of gets hot. I'd rather just not chance it. Angle mode. So let's go ahead and take off. We're going to take off in angle mode. Get some air flowing. Battery critical. So about the changes that we made, we um, get my cruise throttle where I want it. Set up for about five or so amps. Yeah, that temperature is coming down now. We're back down to 117, 116 and it's still dropping. So let's talk about the changes. Um, you might have noticed my video looked a little bit better during my takeoff and climb out. Um, let me switch to cruise mode. Cruise. And you might have noticed I took off in angle mode. I actually have angle mode available. I, um, I'm i flying with my mode switch set up on the six position switch in the uh, Radio Master radio. Which previously I had it set on switch C and switch D. Kind of combination of switches. And that was a carryover from when I used to fly with the Tyrannus. That's where I had my mode switches on that radio. And I just kind of carried that over to some of my other airplanes. So back to the other changes. The video. I added an LC filter on the 12-volt uh, power that's coming out of the flight controller. Powering the video transmitter and the camera. I did a little bit of experimentation with different power setups. I flew, or, or I didn't fly rather, I did it on the bench. But I try powering it directly off of the uh, battery and also on the ESC output pads on the flight controller just so that the current sensor would measure it. I tried both sides of that and the uh, built-in filtering in the Cadex Retail flight camera which is what I'm using as well as the Matek video transmitter. Neither one was able to cope with the motor noise. It actually performed worse like that than it did you know, running through the flight controller's regulated power. So I went back to the regulated power, which is 12 volts, and I added an LC filter between the flight controller and the uh, video transmitter and camera on the 12 volt output. And that seems to have eliminated most, if not all, of the noise I was having before. Um, now we're still sitting at, what, 15 volts right now? The battery is still pretty hot. Um, but previously I was running, uh, when I would run down to about 13 and a half volts, I would have noise show up in the video. So to simulate that, I was running on the bench with a 3S LiPo during my testing, and I could easily get that noise to show back up. So I, uh, I started playing around with the filters and power in different ways and things, and I got it to look as good as it does now. So hopefully that's going to carry through to the end of the flight, but we'll go ahead and push the battery down to at least 13 and a half, maybe a little closer towards 13 or so. And that is a 4S uh, lithium ion 18650 pack. So that's more than safe to do so. But I want to go ahead and push it a little ways and see if the noise will come back or not. Um, another change, some of the stuff on the OSD. I mentioned the uh, temperature already. Down on the lower right corner, I have the temperature, and again, that is from the flight controller's barometer is where that's, that temperature reading is coming from. Um, I don't know how useful it is, I just thought it would be interesting. Um, and I also have a little clock down there, and that is the, uh, time, the actual time of day. It gets that from the GPS. It is 10.50 a.m. right now. You notice we have a lot of patchy clouds and sun and everything out, so we may get into a little bit of a daytime heating and thermal activity. Might get a little rough, but... We'll find out. And if you notice over on the left center of the OSD, I have my GPS ground speed like normal, but right below it, I have a wind speed indicator. And that's another feature that's built into INAV that I personally have never used before. This is the first time trying it out. 
um, I had used a similar feature, basically the same thing in uh, RGPlane. And I really liked it. I enjoyed having that information on the screen. So I set it up on here just to uh, try it out and compare. And so far, it seems to be pretty accurate. So we're only showing a two mile an hour wind right now. And now the arrow is pointing east to west. I'm not sure if that direction the wind is going or the direction the wind is coming from. So let's spin back around. We're running about 36 miles an hour flying with that arrow. Let's fly against that arrow and see if our speed drops at all. Showing about 35 miles an hour right now. 37, 38, 39. Now we're doing 34. It's kind of hard to tell, honestly. Um, my first initial thought would be that I'm flying into the wind right now. But I actually don't know the weather forecast and everything is showing calm with no wind. And I'm not really feeling much wind, but it's estimating about a 2 mile an hour wind that we're flying in, 1.97 to be exact. So I guess maybe on a more windy day it'd be more obvious, but we'll figure it out. Um, I hope it works well though if it seems to be accurate it's going to be a pretty neat thing to have on screen there let's see I have a uh, different flight mode set up I have angle mode and cruise mode and I have a waypoint mode set up but I don't have any missions loaded in the flight controller so obviously we can't fly any waypoint missions um, but it's there if I ever decide to start playing around with that but other than that everything should be pretty well Good to go. Um, I want to go back to angle mode. Angle. I want to fly in angle mode, hands off for a little ways, and see if it uh, auto levels the board. Because I do have that set up. And basically flying in angle mode with auto level enabled as well, it should auto tune the uh, pitch control. Or not pitch control, the uh, pitch leveling on the board. And basically what you'll notice my feet per second over on the uh, right hand side of the OSD just below my altitude, the feet per second, the climb and sink rate, that should pretty well settle down. Um, and you'll see we, we'll probably be hitting some thermal activity and climb and sink and stuff like that, which we are. I can see it quite a bit. But it's generally going to tune the board so that it flies straight and level at center stick. So in, And the trims are also being trimmed all the time. So if we switch back to manual right now, the board, the airplane should basically fly straight and level. Manual. No change. Although it is getting veered off a little bit by the wind gusts and things. So let's go back to angle mode. And just cruise around in angle mode. You see it will let the airplane sink a bit in the turns in angle mode. But center stick should fly pretty well straight and level. Now it's not worried about a heading or, or it just wants to level the wings and that's it. Pitch and roll axis in angle mode. And I I prefer landing in angle mode. Uh, manual mode's fine, but on windy days and stuff like that, I, I just like the way angle mode feels while landing. And of course, cruise, cruise. will manage your course over the ground as well as your altitude. So pretty handy little setup here and of course we also have a uh, return to home as well as a fail safe test mode which we can test those now we'll see return to home now when I switch to return to home I have it set to circle first and it's going to do a right hand circle so it'll bank to the right and climb up to I think 300 feet is what my return to home is set at and then it will set a course to home from that point so let's try that um, actually I want to I want to head back this way a bit so it does its climb out over the field just in case. If I have to go pick the airplane up, it'd be a lot easier to go find it and get it. So let's enable that now. We're going to go return to home. Return to launch. Return to launch. You'll notice on screen there it says adjusting RTH altitude. That means you see it's not going to fly back home right now. It's going to loiter at this point where I enable return to home until it gets to 300 feet or maybe it's 250. Or maybe it just starts its turn before it hits 300. It started the turn back to home at about 250 or so, but it's going to fly home at 300 feet. And you see everything works exactly as expected. So now I want to test RTH mode. Fail safe on, 
fail safe on. I want to see what happens when it gets home on a return to home. Or fail safe test mode, rather. I want to see if it's going to just loiter home or if it'll start an emergency landing. I'm just kind of curious about that. And obviously you can set it up to react the way you want it to, but I honestly do not remember how I have this one set up. So I just want to test it right now and we'll find out. But it'll do one of two things. It'll either loiter around home or it will start a landing sequence, which I have not even read about, much less tried to set it up or configure it. So I do not want it to land. I would prefer it to loiter around home, which I believe that is what it's set up to do. Yep, loitering around home. You'll notice that note on the OSD. So that's good to go. Cruise. So let's uh, go back to cruise and keep flying until the battery gets low, I guess. See all these, these clouds out here? Um, from the ground, they look a lot lower than they are. See, I'm at 300 feet right now, and I don't seem any closer to them than I was when I took off. But I would really, really like to catch the clouds low one day. Probably have to be like some early morning fog, more or less. But I'd like to do a little bit of cloud surfing. It's just, it's pretty tempting looking at those clouds. But we're not going to do it. We're going to play it safe. Follow the rules. Um... So that 97 degrees is actually pretty accurate as far as the actual temperature outside. That's about what the temperature is right now. So I was curious how well that would work being inside the fuselage. And obviously you can see while the airplane was sitting outside waiting for a GPS lock, it did heat up pretty, pretty good. We were what, like 115 or something like that when we took off. You know, we were pretty high up there on the temperature. But, uh... It cooled right off once we got in the air. It's matching the actual ambient temperature outside, which is a lot warmer than is comfortable. It's kind of why I was pushing to get the airplane in the air a little bit sooner rather than later. At the start of the flight, I wanted to get some airflow in and cool things off. And the video transmitter and stuff like that will warm up as well as the gyros and accelerometers on the flight controller they will heat up pretty quick and that temperature drift is not a good thing it's never a good thing as far as accuracy with gyros and accelerometers as they heat up and cool down they drift more so than if they just stay at a stable temperature it's a pretty fun little airplane to fly i still think i have a problem with the uh wiring or connectors on the camera you notice when i pan a certain point right around here those black bars will come back in the camera so that's right if it's right around this point where i pan right here i notice they're coming back but if i look over here they're fine so i guess i should probably replace that wire and the connectors just to be safe So we're down to 13.8 volts right now. I've seen no motor noise come back in yet. But like I said, previously it was showing up at approximately 13.5. There about. Pretty fun stuff though. I like this little airplane just cruising around like this. Car on the road down there. So, uh, another uh, couple of things I want to talk about. The, uh, see my return to home, my arrow? 
home arrow points at home. As I pan the camera, it always points home. Um, I mentioned that in some in the last couple of flights videos with this little airplane, and a couple of people did ask to see it. So I mean, it's really simple to set up. It's in the release notes for I now. There's a bird kind of cruising around. Let's see if he wants to fly. Oh yeah, he's off my wingtip. Where he was? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Don't want to see him anymore. I guess he checked out pretty quick. He's like, nope. Not today. Uh, but yeah, I did mention I would kind of show how to set that up. It's real simple. I'll probably just roll that into another video. Um, my Oh, we lost video. Uh, I guess we're going to go return home. It's going to be an interesting return home because we just completely lost, completely lost video. Um, let me check my ground station setup is actually not powered right now. See if I can get that powered back up. Uh, give me just a minute. Switching batteries and things here. Um, I need a 3S LiPo. Which I do have one here. Let's see if this will get me powered. And it did. Okay, so we're live. My uh, ground station battery just died. It should have been charged. I'm not sure what's up with that. But we're good to go again. So let's go back to, uh, well, actually that battery is sitting at 11.2. That's a 3S LiPo that I just plugged in. Should be good for a little while. But I'm going to go ahead and get the airplane back on the ground now. Um, unless I can find another one of my batteries, which I don't see just yet. They're all put up except the ones I was using. But anyway, um, we'll just leave it and return to home while I finish talking about the uh, stuff I was mentioning there a second ago. Um, the return arrow that always points home. I'll kind of do a quick demo of that in a video. I'm also going to set show a video of how I set up my, uh, my little uh, dead band on the sliders using the curve in the uh, in OpenTX. So I'll probably just bake those two into one short video and upload it at some point in the near future. But we are at 13.5 volts now. So I'm actually going to go back to angle mode. And I'm going to cut power and reduce to altitude so that we can pull a lot of power and make the battery sag, which is not hard to do with these lithium ion batteries. But I don't want to climb too much when I start playing with the power. So I'm going to go ahead and intentionally make the airplane, make the uh, the voltage drop. So let's go ahead and throttle back up. And we're going to pull the voltage down. Battery. And there we go, all the way down to 12 volts. And no motor noise. So yeah, I think that filter was successful. So I'm going to go ahead and land now just so I can uh, get that ground station battery sorted out. And uh, go ahead and end the video. So I'll take the time to thank you for watching and of course to all my Patreon pledges and YouTube channel members that put money in my pocket and allow me to buy the stuff to do this with. So thank you for making it possible. And thank you to everyone that watches the video, likes, comments, subscribes, ask any questions, whatever. Just keep the ball rolling. See how smooth of a landing we can get here in angle mode. Put power and flare, and we'll slow down a little too much. Bounced it a little bit, but not too bad. Let's go ahead and taxi back. I did cut the grass, by the way, but it's already growing. It grows like faster than you can cut it pretty much this time of year. And I'm stuck. Can't move. All right, so that's going to be the end of the flight. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Um, anything else you want me to put into the quick little uh, demo video about the sliders and the home arrow and stuff like that, let me know. I'll just kind of do like an all quick little maybe questions and answers and tips kind of thing. So uh, if you watch to this point, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.